Well, thank you all for being with us today in this special conference and make it possible to share the MyNUAD results with all of you. It has been for us exciting times since this project started about five years ago. Uh, we started in December 2013, and uh, this is a large initiative that was funded under the Seven Framework Program. It has included a multidisciplinary and multi-sectoral consortium of academic partners, industrial partners, and also associations. And in total, we are 30 partners representing 50 European countries and also non-European countries, US, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. And during this time, the MineWad Consortium has focused on uh, important societal challenges like obesity and behavioral disorders, with the idea of finding new solutions to tackle these disorders, mainly via dietary strategies. And while it's important to note that obesity continues to be one of our major challenges, uh, no country has reversed the obesity epidemic yet. Of particular concern is obesity in children, and it's also uh, interesting uh, to say that uh, obesity is not only a problem of metabolic deregulation, it's also linked to uh, mental disorders like eating disorders and mood disorders that are associated and constitute an important cause of disability in our society. And in this context, I would like also to note that uh, these uh, problems are not only affecting uh, developed countries, but also low-income countries, due to the fact that the food production system is now globalized and is not providing yet the right diets for a healthy living to everyone. In this context, the MyNUAD project has set the challenge to try to find new solutions to tackle these disorders more effectively, and to do so, we have investigated in deep the interactions between the gut microbiota, the lifestyle, mainly the diet, and also the biological determinants of this disorder to pinpoint new possible strategies to uh, innovate in this area and to provide better solutions. And in total, we can say that we have worked on three main areas. One of the areas has been uh, to investigate thoroughly the interactions between the microbiota and the diet. And in this context, we have tried to understand better who the microbiota and the diet uh, can contribute to the deregulation of the energy balance, energy intake and energy expenditure, and thus contribute to obesity and the inflammatory process underlying obesity that is linked to metabolic complications like type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular diseases. But we have tried to go further than that. We have also investigated how highly palatable foods or other aspects of our lifestyle, like the stress, the sleeping patterns, can contribute to overeating and thereby contribute to obesity, and also probably to eating behavioral disorders. In addition to that, we have also investigated the connection between our diet, our gut microbes, and our emotional behavior and mood. In this context, we have done, for example, intervention and uh, trials in humans. And in first place, we have done a, a set of interventions to understand who the gut microbes metabolize nutrients and which microbes are responsive to dietary interventions and which are the consequence on the pool of metabolites that are generated and that can impact on different uh, mental health aspects. In this area, I would like to highlight uh, some of the insights we have uh, bring with this project in relation to the risk-benefit balance of high-protein diets in body weight management and how the different uh, type of proteins, the protein origin, whether the protein comes from plants or from animal products, can impact on the pool of metabolites generated by the gut microbiota and uh, the possible risk of developing other diseases, such as inflammatory bowel diseases or kidney diseases. And this data will be presented in detail by Francois Blacher from INRA in France. A second trial that was very interesting was um, a study, an intervention study with a very elegant design, where we have used fecal transplantation experiments in humans to prove whether the microbiota or metabolites produced by the gut microbiota, like butyrate, 
uh, play a role restoring the metabolic phenotype of patients with metabolic syndrome. And this has been done by Max Nudrop from University of Amsterdam, and uh, he will present the details of uh, this study and all the results. Uh, he has analyzed different outcomes, and some of the outcomes were related to the gut-brain axis and the possible, the possible effects on the serotonergic and dopaminergic system. In this context, our institution, CSIC, has also analyzed in the, the microbiota and realized that the microbiota of the subject has an important effect on the success of the fecal transplantation process. And this information is very important because can guide the future use of these strategies in clinical practice. In second place, we have also included in this uh, work area uh, a couple of interesting observational studies in humans. One of the studies was done in children thanks to the collaboration of the leader, Wolfgang Ahrens, from the IDEFIX and I family cohort study. This has allowed us to follow up children during a time course of five years to be able to um, follow uh, the uh, weight change during this time and also the microbiota and pinpoint possible biomarkers of the development of obesity, not only related to the microbiota, but also related to other outcomes we have measured during the time course. And this can be very interesting and important informative uh, data uh, for those children at risk of developing depression in order to start introducing intervention strategies at early periods uh, before the development of obesity. In addition to that, uh, the group of Patricia Brigidi at the University of Bologna has done a unique study in the context of this project uh, relating for the first time the microbiota with eating behavior in humans. Uh, she has compared on the basis of the cohort uh, that was already existing in the Neurofast uh, project. Uh, she has uh, compared the microbiota of control women and women uh, with obesity and obesity and food addictive behavior, being able to establish some relationships with possible mechanisms behind our eating behavior, whether the microbiota is related to uh, the mechanisms that control the homeostatic uh, balance or with the reward balance. In this area of work, we have also included in vitro and mechanistic studies. And in this context, our institution, CSIC, has also done an important effort cultivating bacteria that are hard to be cultivated. We have increased our collection of human bacteria, including isolated from uh, more than 50 new species. And we have done so by investigating the natural interactions in the ecosystem and which nutrients could be added to the cultures in isolation that we do in the lab to promote the growth of these bacteria and make possible to produce these bacteria at least at medium scale. This means that we will be able to uh, develop some applications with these isolates. In addition to that, we have also worked uh, with uh, aspects related to the effectiveness of these bacteria and the mechanisms of action. And for example, we have evaluated uh, the effects of one of these bacteria in diet induced obese mice, uh, that is Bacteroides uniformis. Uh, this bacteria was shown to reverse the metabolic alterations and the um, metabolic uh, phenotype and immune alterations. And we have shown uh, some of the mechanisms by which the bacteria could act. For example, this bacteria can induce the production of TSLP by epithelial cells, also the production of uh, IL-33 in the adipose tissue. These are immunoregulatory factors that induce T regulatory cells. Uh, and recently, we have realized also that the bacteria induce uh, the uh, increases in ILC3 cells. These are uh, a special type of lymphoid cells that uh, react very quickly in front of a danger to uh, protect the mucose and is also, are also able to interact with microphages and activate the production of T regulatory cells. Also, we have uh, in the last uh, years combined these bacteria with fibers that were provided by one of our industrial partners, Cargill. 
And we observed that together these bacteria with the fibers, uh, the bacteria could exert uh, some synergic effects, the two components, and uh, we observed also some complementary effects. For example, the administration of the two ingredients together increased the expression of PPR gamma, transcriptional factor that can activate the genes involved in thermogenesis that could explain the reduction in body weight. Well, going to another set of trials that have been done by other partners, UCL, the University of Ljubljan, led by, the, by, Catherine, by um, Natalie Delsen, uh, have investigated thoroughly um, the role of the microbiota in the gut liver access and the consequence in metabolism and other outcomes. In particular, uh, she has discovered that the DPP4 activity, which is a dipeptidase that can activate and inactivate uh, incretins and neuropeptides and play uh, many different roles, is produced not only by host eukaryotic cells, but also by bacterial cells. And uh, they have discovered how this enzyme can play a role not only in metabolism, but in other outcomes, and can play also a role uh, in this gut liver axis and uh, the connection that is related to inflammation in the liver. Uh, in this context also, uh, the group of Peter Holzer in the University of Graz, Austria, that will present the data also later on, uh, has taken into the gut brain connection. He has investigated whether the diet and whether the microbiota could drive essential functions to our life as emotions and behavior. And uh, he has investigated deeply which are the molecular mechanisms mediating in this connection. And you will know about the details of the results later. And well, in a second area of uh, research in this project, we have also investigated uh, the environmental factors that influence the gut microbiota development at early stages of life in infants and how this process can impact the development of the immune system and the development of our nervous system. And how this can also have consequence on later metabolic health and also uh, mental health via the regulation of the immune, endocrine, and neural pathways that mediate in this communication that is also a path whereby the microbiota communicate with the brain. Well, in this context, we have done two longitudinal studies. One was led by Catherine Stanton from the University of Cork that uh, she will also present later in detail. Uh, she has followed up infants since birth. Uh, she has investigated in particular the role of antibiotics, the role of uh, the delivery mode in uh, this uh, evolution of the gut microbiota in early life and how this can impact the immune system and how this can impact, for example, our stress response. Also, Christina Campoy has done a very interesting longitudinal study looking at effects like uh, the maternal obesity and other environmental factors that affect the infant microbiota at early life and how this correlates to neurodevelopmental outcomes and uh, to the risk of developing obesity later in life. And an important aspect of these studies is that Christina has used advanced brain imaging techniques that allow to uh, investigate the structure and function of the brain, that allow to investigate also what we call the connectome. This means the neurons that are activated together to perform a function, and how this can relate to the gut microbiota and neurodevelopmental outcomes. And this will be completely new information provided by my new ad. And well, in relation to the innovations activities, I also would like to share with you how rigorously the industrial partners have worked in our consortium to try to select the ingredients that they thought could bring some benefits to the consumers. They have uh, done enormous effort to include ingredients in food prototypes to preserve not only the safety quality of the products, but also the sensory quality of the products, something that is essential also for consumers, and scale up the production to be able to do intervention trials, and some of them very, very large in numbers. 
and with the ultimate goal of providing evidence-based information to consumers. In this context, we have been able to do two types of trials. One trial with probiotics that was led by um, Ted Danan from the University of Cork. Uh, they have tested different probiotic strains to see whether this can increase our resilience to stress, something really essential for our daily life. And uh, there is another uh, last trial, intervention trial, that was performed by the University of Copenhagen, will be presented later, with a milk product enriched with fibers, uh, where they have investigated the role in weight management and the role in some markers of metabolic health. And while regarding uh, the exploitation activities, we have made three main contributions in this area. First, we have generated knowledge that will foster further research in this field. We have generated an uh, important number of data and data sets from eight intervention studies in humans and from four longitudinal studies, uh, observational studies uh, in humans too. These data are now being integrated in the phenotype database of TNO. TNO is doing now an enormous effort to integrate all these data from individual studies to draw conclusions at global level to be able to generalize uh, our individual con conclusions. And I must say that we have also contributed to generate standards in this field, something very important, and also uh, develop analytical tools. And here I want to mention the work of the University of Freiburg that uh, has optimized a high throughput platform to analyze lipidomics in feces, something that was very, very challenging. And in fact, he is now uh, involved in an initiative to develop the first standards for the lipidomics field. Well, we have also addressed aspects related to public health. I think we have generated data that can support policies in this area and future dietary recommendations. It's uh, true that we are really at the very beginning, and what we have done is, also, is only a start point, but we have updated all the information available about the possible relationship between the diet, the microbiota, and health outcomes related to metabolic aspects and also ment mental aspects. And we have also translated all this information in a language that is accessible to the general public and also to consumers to inform also consumers. And well, we have also generated marketable products to increase the competitiveness of the European industry. And I will mention some. We have generated new potential probiotics that are also called now uh, life biotherapeutic products. We have identified potential biomarkers for predicting the disease risk. We have also generated foods and ingredients and be tested uh, to um, verify whether they provide health benefits in humans by, uh, by uh, well-designed uh, intervention trials. And also the University of Bologna has created a startup that is called WellMircore for profiling the microbiota. And well, the knowledge generated by my new gut has also been the basis of future research activities. Some of them are already ongoing, some are about to start. And of these uh, seven research activities, I would like to mention particularly the project that is going to be coordinated by the University of Bologna, by Marco Candela and Patricia Brigidi in the context of the uh, microbiome and the food systems. We have also done important efforts training students. It was a pleasure, in fact. We have trained at least 14 PhD students, 30 postdocs, and many undergraduate students that will be the future in this research field. And I also want to mention that all these activities have been overseen by a scientific advisory board, by an excellent scientific advisory board that has been with us in all the meetings, providing always feedback, critical feedback, and help us to improve uh, and to uh, go ahead with, uh, with our work plan, but introducing uh, improvements in the, in the way. And particularly, I want to thank Anthony Lee and Garrett Williard for making possible to be here today. 
And well, last but not least, we have been also very successful in the dissemination activities. We have uh, more than 100,000 web page views. Uh, we have uh, also um, been very active and very productive generating scientific publications. We have a record of 48 publications directly from my new ad project and from other collaborations that were very interesting and that uh, were coming out from uh, all uh, this, uh, from this topic and uh, well, uh, relationships and cooperation with other groups. We published a special issue covering all the objectives and the work plan of the project at the beginning of the project. And we have also um, published several opinion papers in clinical nutrition in this last period to talk about dietary recommendations and what is the role that the microbiota could play in the future in this area. Well, we have also participated in press articles, in TV interviews, and in postcards. We have been very active in presenting at different conferences. We have a record of more than 200 presentations in different events. And uh, well, we have been also in the social media, in Twitter, thanks to Christina and the collaboration of UFIC and in Facebook. And well, all this has been possible thanks to the My New Ad partners that were determined since the very beginning to push uh, the microbiome field further to progress in this research area with the ultimate goal of addressing important societal challenges. Thank you very much, Yolanda. Um, I'll just take one question because we are a bit behind the time. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Luke Pels from Looking into Food here in Brussels. And I wonder about the Mood Food Project, if and how you have maybe worked with them and to what extent uh, yeah, have you worked with them and have you maybe some jo joint findings or maybe reproduced some of each other's findings as they looked more broadly in what the impact of what we eat on mood? Thank you. Well, thanks for the question. I'm very grateful about that. Uh, we, in fact, tried to, to prepare a proposal with them and we are in touch with them. In fact, uh, my group uh, particularly is collaborating with them to, to do some work in this area. Uh, that was very short, so if there's another very short one, maybe? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Yolanda, and thank you to all the other speakers of the session. It was very, very interesting, and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.